So these are going to be the best cards with the Badlands expansion. These are the ones you are most excited to open on release day or the ones you will probably craft in order to make a meta deck. And we are going to be going in alphabetical order from Death Knight to Warrior. And again, this expansion is a little bit weaker than a lot of other expansions. So some cards might make this list that wouldn't make it in other lists. And one of those cards is Reska the Pit Boss. The reason why it's on here is because it might not have necessarily been the best, but it was surprisingly good. You were able to reduce the cost of this card very quickly, a lot faster than I thought you would be able to. And there's a lot of undead and death rattle synergy in Death Knight that can make Reska a lot stronger. So overall, this along with cards like crop rotation, which can immediately kill off four of your own little 1-1 minions, as well as potentially kill off an enemy minion, actually makes this a very viable card. It might not be game breaking, but I think it could find its spot in, in several Death Knight decks. Next, we have the first like really strong card. It is the Blind Eye Sharpshooter. Demon Hunter has a lot of free cards. Predation becomes free if you play a Naga. Guess what? This is a Naga. You've got Disposal of Evidence, which gives you three attack, shuffles a card back into your deck, which you can then draw later with this card. You have momentum that reduces in cost for every card that you've drawn, and then it'll give you four attack damage. So you can do a surprising amount of burst damage for relatively cheap, as well as filling your board with cheap Nagas uh, as early as turn six or seven. And if you don't kill the opponent with this ability, um, you will clear their board and do quite a bit of damage, and then you can try to finish them off when you play the second Blind Eye Sharpshooter. Very, very solid card. Next card is just Druid in general. If you open a Druid card, you're happy. Every single card from Druid pretty much is strong. All the rares and epic especially are strong so yeah if you open a druid card good job it's the best class by far i think rogue is kind of close but we'll get to that a little bit later but yeah if you open a druid card you're you're happy next is thelder and the lost uh, I think that this is the, that's not Druid because Druid is in general really strong. The best overall Highlander card, I do again think Druids might be a little bit better, but this one I think fits Hunter pretty well. It can be good removal in a deck that doesn't have the greatest removal um, usually. It, it can be a decent late game win condition if you can pump it up a, not, a lot. Uh, I This card's hard to rate because I see the potential and I know Hunter has had a lot of good Highlander decks in the past because it's very tempting based you can put in a lot of different cards and some tech cards and this can just be a good filler card i don't think that it's good enough to build a deck around but if you open reno which i will get into a little bit later and you want to already build a highlander deck this card will do very well in a highlander hunter deck next we have prismatic beam amazing card um this is going to be great at shutting down early aggression it does it to all enemies so it can also do it to the opponent's face um yes it is situational into specifically aggro so it might be a little bit meta dependent but if you're playing against um a meta that has a lot of minions on board this card will be absolutely fantastic it can get as cheap as like one mana if your opponent nearly floods the board and if they do it early on and you shut them down there's nothing that they can do next we have the high host silver wing it's just a good value card. Uh, it draws you a spell. It's a two mana, two, one divine shield, and it's a dragon. Basically everything that a paladin could want, it could just fit into a lot of more mid-range paladin decks. It's not game breaking, but again, it, it does help paladin a lot. Next, we have Benevolent Banker. This card is a card you don't really build a deck around, but it could easily, easily just fit into an already existing deck, Control Priest. So if you have Control Priest, or at least like kind of a build of Control Priest, but you don't have all of the cards filled out, this could easily just go right in there and, and act as more disruption for your opponent. Uh, it's, it's just a solid card overall. Next, we have Wishing Well. Basically, if you open any rogue card, you're pretty happy. Most of them are good as well, same with Druid. But Wishing Well is probably the most interesting and best, especially with all the coin synergy. So <laughs> if you open this card, I would highly recommend trying a coin rogue. It was surprisingly good in the theory crafting. Um, and yes, it's a little RNG based because you might low roll on the legendaries you get. But if you generate enough of them, uh, it, it will still probably be good. Next, we have Julie the Kid. Uh, it's basically three excavates for one card and the excavating for rogue isn't bad either. You have some pretty good, relatively cheap options. That being said, the reward is mediocre it's best if you get it eight times if you can get it eight times it's insane but excavate feels a little bit slow and i think will need to be buffed and if excavate gets buffed all of a sudden excavate rogue will be insane as of right now i think it's just good it has some potential especially if you can shadow step like truly the kid and get a ton of treasures out of nowhere but unless you have like the insane setup it's going to be kind of difficult 
And then you have the Antique Flinger, another Excavate card that destroys an enemy minion, 4 mana, 5, 4. It's just good. Again, you can excavate things relatively quickly with Rogue, so this will be activated relatively quickly as well. Next, you have the Trusty Companion. I think this is overall the best Shaman card because it's card draw. It's immediate plus 2, plus 3. And you want to build an elemental shaman deck most of the time. Uh, and I think that that's pretty solid. Over, I, I, Maybe I'm biased. I just really like elemental shaman from the past. So maybe I am overestimating how good this is going to be. But I think that I will put this in an elemental shaman deck probably. I mean, worst case scenario, plus two, plus three, and card draw. If you play it on just like, if you put it in a Highlander deck, is not bad right? Because a Highlander deck will have less consistent cards, less consistent draw, and this can fill up some spots. I think it's pretty solid. Next, we have the Waste Remover. Um, the reason why this is good is because you can remove the bottom three cards of your deck, which is very good with the uh, Sludge deck, because usually their abilities put sh like the, the radioactive sludges or whatever they're called at the bottom of your deck. So if you shuffle, you know, three to six of them in there relatively early on, you play this guy. It does nine damage. He's a four mana, seven, seven. If he burns cards at the bottom of your deck anyway, and it's not the Sludge, it doesn't really matter because he's a four mana, seven, seven. You can just assume that, hey, I wouldn't have drawn those cards anyway. They're at the bottom of my deck. He's a four mana 7-7 seven, seven with minimal downside that I can just slap the opponent in the face with. And it's a demon, which can have some pretty cool implications. I think this card's insane. It'll especially be good with the Sludge deck. Next, we have the Tram Conductor. I actually liked the, um, the whole Excavate package for Warlock. It felt relatively quick, faster than some other classes. It felt more well-rounded. It just fought for board a little bit more. And it's got this legendary, which can be an extra win condition, not even including the snake, which we'll get into in a second. But yeah, this card being able to fill the board with three, three rush minions on turn seven, maybe earlier if you can coin it out turn six, is just nuts. Next, we have the snake. This card's insane. You basically play it three times. It steals the opponent HP. Unless they run Prince Renathal, if you can use two youthful brewmasters to just bounce this, bounce this to your back, back to your hand a couple of times, um, yeah, you literally just win the game with this by turn like eight, nine, or ten. So, very solid card. I think maybe it might get nerfed, or people will start trying to run Prince Renathal to make you have to bounce it to your hand an extra time. Because I will admit, the Excavate deck didn't really have that many ways of doing damage other than the Snake. So, if they do run Prince Renathal, things might get a little bit sticky. So, it, it could be meta dependent, but I think this is the best Excavate like final reward. It was insane. Next, we have just some neutral cards. Cobalt Miner was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. It'll go in every single Excavate uh, deck that you build. Yes, it's a 2-mana 1-1, one, one, and I would like to see this go up a little bit because, again, Excavate feels fairly slow. Maybe make it a 1-mana card or something, um, or make it like a 2-mana two 2-2 two, two, so it can fight for the board a little bit more. I don't know. But, yeah, it's already pretty solid. Next, we have a Warrior card. I, I forgot about this one before going to neutral. The problem with this card is Excavate and Warrior is so bad that even though this card, I think, is one of the best cards that they released, Excavate and Warrior is so fucking terrible that I that it brings this card down enough to maybe not making the list. Um, I thought about this card for, for quite some time, actually. I, I eventually put it on because overall... Its power level is insane, and I have to assume they will buff Warrior Excavate cards. Because they are so bad, it's basically unplayable. I think Warrior is the worst class this expansion overall. Maybe bottom three. There are maybe like one or two that are almost as bad. But yeah, I assume that it will get buffed. Therefore, I am going to put this card on the list. It's just more of an investment card where it might not be as good immediately. Next is Greedy Partner. Two mana, two, three that gives you a coin. Is not only insane and rogue, but it's decent tempo that can also give you more value later on. Like this, can, you can play this turn two and it'll allow you to coin out a four drop turn three possibly to just increase your tempo. This card was just a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I was like, eh, how many times are you going to have a two cost in your hand to get a coin? Two mana, two, three is solid, but I'd rather a three, two because it can trade into more things. But no, uh, two mana, two, three. With this battle cry, way better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it would be like a 3 out of 5. I think it's like a 4 or a 4.5 out of 5, and it's just a common. And then last but not least, we have Reno. Uh, yes, you do have to build a Highlander deck, which is a big, like, punishment, I guess. But its payoff is insane. The, the hero powers are all very, very strong for 2 mana. I mean, being able to just randomly generate a 3 drop and deal 2 damage. Able to discover a spell. Able to give something plus 2, plus 2. You're able to refresh mana crystals, so it's basically free. 
and its battle cry of removing the opponent's board and making them basically not able to play the game for the next turn because they only have one board space. This card is nuts. If you're playing a Highlander deck, if you play this card, your chances of winning are probably 70 to 80 percent. And if you were already winning, it basically guarantees your win. It this card is absolutely nuts, and I would not be surprised if it got nerfed. But I also think because Highlander is such a like hard thing to pull off i could also see this card staying eight mana which is crazy to me so yeah those are the best cards from the expansion from what i experienced and from what i've heard um talk across like other creators and people on reddit or twitter or or all those things so yeah these are the cards that you want to look forward to the most there are maybe a couple that i missed but they're mostly not on here because they'd be a little bit niche and they could be strong but i'm not sure yet um or it's just unsure like there's some priest cards that again i think could be strong but i need to see how they fit into the control priest like are they better than some of the cards that already exist if so great if not i guess they just don't make the cut but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed i'll see you guys in the next one